Hello, guys. How are you? So we have three weeks left of small groups before we hit summer, and it will be a super busy summer. We're excited. So what we want to talk about these next three weeks is something that has that affects every single one of you. All of you deal with it, all of you see it, or maybe all of you have dealt with it at some point. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about technology, all right? Never in a million years would I have thought I'd be carrying around a mini computer in my back pocket. And like some of you have broken one of these and you have cried, right? Some of you have lost this and you have cried. Some of you forget this at home when you go to school and you cry, all right? Today, as a matter of fact, huh? So here's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about technology. And it would be really hypocritical for me to stand up here and say, hey, don't use technology. Because we all have to use technology in some way, shape, or form. Like, we all have a car, right? None of you walked here or, like, rode your bike or ran here, right? All of you drove. So it's kind of using technology in some way, shape, or form. So I really can't stand up here to say, hey, don't use technology. But what we do want to help you with is how to use technology. And it's ironic that we're talking about this over the next couple of weeks because I heard there was this technology thing that happened at Alito High School with some of the freshmen of recording this fight that was going on. So, yeah. So here's the deal. Technology is neutral. Like, it's not good. It's not bad. What happens, what makes it good or bad is on how we use it. Most of us, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that we do is check our social media stuff. For you students, most of you will check your social media the very first thing when you wake up in the morning to make sure that no one has said anything to you or about you. Or you want to make sure you didn't miss anything. All right, maybe how many of you actually put your cell phones outside of your room when you go to bed? Like, I, I don't care if your parents make you or not. You're just, hey, it's out. Okay, that's good. Okay. So what happens is this. Technology has become a crutch for us. And what I mean by that is it's something that we can depend on all the time to kill our boredom. When you go to a movie theater, you used to go to a movie theater and you got there early. You know what you did? You, you talked to each other, right? You had this conversation. You know what you do now? You play a game, all right? And it kills the time. You know, before, when you go out to dinner, you would have conversations with your family instead of just playing on your phone. And, and my dad and, and, and I am just as bad as everyone else. It has become this crutch that we depend on, that we don't know what we're going to do if we don't have our technology, okay? So um, I'm not going to tell you not to use it, but what I am going to teach you or talk to you about is how to balance it out. So Hebrews 4.12, this is what it says. It says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates dividing soul uh, and spirit joints and marrows. It judges thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Here's the thing that I notice in this passage. It is alive and active. It's not dead. It's not just laying there, but it's alive. It will do something if you allow it to do something. It penetrates dividing soul and spirit. And that's what I hope that it does today. All right. So Imagine in Genesis 11.1, 1, this is what it says. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. So I like t TV. I like TV a lot. And uh, there's this old show called Swamp Man. He's from Louisiana, and I apologize if you're from Louisiana. He speaks English. However, his English has subtitles. S some of you are still catching up to this, right? There's no reason for English to have subtitles, right? 
But because it is so slurred and crazy and hillbilly-esque, you have to have subtitles, right? And so imagine everyone having the same language. I don't know about you, but I've gone to Mexico a few times and I have made a complete and utter fool of myself. I'll give you an example. We were serving and we were, I was playing soccer with a kid in the street and it is hot and I'm thirsty. What do they tell you when you go to Mexico? Don't drink the water. So this little guy says, hey, agua. I'm like, yes, I am so thirsty right now. He's like, a key, a key. I'm like, see, sí, see. Sí. So I'm just walking back to his house. And Deb asked, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going with it. He's going to get me some water. I'm so thirsty. She's like, you cannot drink the water. I'm like, oh, that's right. I'm like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm no longer thirsty anymore. All right. And my Spanish is terrible. And so it freaks me out when I go somewhere and I don't speak the same language. And that's probably one of the reasons why I don't travel very much is because I'm just afraid of making a fool of myself. Right. Can you imagine just being able to travel the same place or going somewhere different and speaking the same language and being able to order and knowing that, hey, what you're eating is legit food instead of dog or cat or snake or snail or whatever, right? Some things have been questionable, right? So here's the deal. At one point, the Bible talks about everyone having one language. And here's what happens. And I think... This really applies to technology today. And this is what it says in uh, Genesis 11, starting in verse two. And as the people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves lest we disperse over the face of this earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the towers which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from over there, over all the face of the earth, and left off the building of the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. So here's what, ha here's what we can learn in this passage. God scatters everyone and confuses all their language. Because there's a couple things in this verse that I want you to know. Number one, what do they want to do? It says they want to make a name for themselves. In all of social media, for those of you that are on it, everybody wants to make a name for themselves. That's what social media is all about. Because no one wakes up in the morning and posts a photo at their worst possible time. No one does that. Like everyone posts like when they're perfectly done up, or their artful pose of looking off into the distance, right? No one posts me when I first wake up in the morning and I'm in my cutoff t-shirt and I got holes all over it and I'm itching my belly. That is not something Deb posts on social media. Everyone just wakes up and they're just perfect, right? No one posts that. Like when you think about social media, everyone now is trying to make a name for themselves whether you're in a band or you're a baseball player or softball or football or whatever it is, the reason why most of us post is we want people to recognize us. And that's exactly what the people were doing right here. They were trying to make a name for themselves. And God says, hey, I can't let this happen because anything they propose at this point, they're going to be able to accomplish. And I want you to notice something. That in this passage, even God says, if they put their heads together and they propose it and they speak the same language, they're going to be able to accomplish it. 
This should tell us that, man, if we really put our heads together and we start working together, we can accomplish a lot. We, we can do something. But God says, hey, if you do it to make a name for yourself, he's not in that, right? So he comes down and he confuses the language. God has provided the tools, the bricks and the mortar for them to make this building. That's important. He has provided the tools to make this possible. Guys, the, the technology that you have in your hands, it's provided by God. Like he's given people the ability to be able to, to come up with that idea. Like, I don't know if you remember, but cell phones used to be this thing that were like this and they were in this little bag and you keep it in your car and that's how it was. And then it used to be really cool that you would keep it on your belt clip. Like all the cool kids, yes, not your dads, would keep it on their belt clip and they'd pull it out and they'd be like, yeah. And then to text, you would say like, okay. And you'd have to hit like four, three times to get to the third letter. And then you'd go back and you'd hit the next letter twice to get to the next letter. And so everything was real short. And for the internet, <laughs> the internet wouldn't happen because it would take you all day to find that internet and everything would be in black and white. And not to mention that texting or calling someone, all that happened after 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. on Friday because weekends were free. Like never in our wildest dreams did we think that you would have an entire computer in the back pocket. Like this, you know how much this costs? An iPhone is like $1,200. In my day, this is how much parents are willing to spend on a car and they still had a heart attack with that. And now it's just no big deal. Like, so what happens is God has provided all this technology, guys, and it's how you use it. It is how you use it. So I, I saw the video of all the people standing around while this other kid got thrown to the ground. And the one thing that you notice in this video is everyone's recording it and just watching. No one stepped in. No one said, hey, maybe this is not the brightest idea that you've ever had in your entire life. No one stepped in and said, hey, we shouldn't be doing this. They just went with it. And what happens is you've got all these video angles and all these people recording it. So it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, there's video. So students, wherever you go, whatever you do, people are recording it. They're watching you. And someone has to step in and say, hey, maybe that's not the right thing. And what I see is a room full of believers that can say, hey, how are you using technology? Maybe this isn't the greatest idea. How can we honor God with the technology that we have? Is this something that honors God or it's trying to make a name for ourself? So let me ask you some questions. How we relate to certain things that God has given us, we seem to distort. We distort everything that he's given us. If you think about it through the ages, we distort everything he's given us and we put a twist on it to make it fit our plan or our purpose. We distort it. Facebook. Facebook's a great tool to spread the gospel, to share people with what Jesus is doing in the life of our church, what he's doing in your life. From, some of you have grandparents that live somewhere else. And I, I, know, I know when my grandpa was alive, he loved to be on Facebook because it was a way for him to get to see what his grandkids are doing. But we've distorted it into something weird, into something that just, just doesn't honor other people, okay? We distort things. Who are your friends on Facebook? Who your friends are matters. Some of you, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, you're friends with that person to get your name up or to get more likes. Maybe you don't know who Butterfly Kisses is, and you shouldn't accept the friend requests from TikTok, whoever they are. Maybe it's something that you've never seen this person, and you should just ignore it, okay? 
So here's my question as we uh, close. The band's going to come up. And this is my question for you. Who or what is your crutch? There is something in your life, technology-wise, that is your go-to. So maybe if you're having a really hard time with your parents or your family, or you're having questions, or you're mad, and you go to your room, and the first thing you pull out is your phone, and you're seeking advice, well, maybe the first thing you should pull out is what does God's word say? Maybe God's word can calm you down. Maybe that's what you should be going back to. Maybe that should be your crutch instead of your phone. Because your friends are going to tell you exactly what you want to hear most of the time. Whereas the Bible is going to tell you what God's word says. So who or what is your crutch? And then this is this. This is the next thing. Who do you turn to when you're feeling down? See, the people that were building this tower, they left God out of the equation because it was about them building a name for themselves. It was about them. It was about them doing something. With what you're doing in your life, is it about you or is it about God? Let me pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity we have to study your word. Father, I pray you'd help us to use technology to honor you and please you, not for our sake, not for our name. Father, I pray that as we worship, we would worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, and I pray that you would help us to discern our technology and how it should be used for you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.